Take one man blinded by ambition. Follow him from poverty to public acclaim. That's our story, Detour, taken from the files of John Steele, adventurer. This is John Steele. Very often, my guests take you to far-off places of foreign scenes and intrigue. But this week's story takes place right here in the middle of a large city. Because, as I've mentioned on other occasions, adventure can take place anywhere. Yeah, that's right, even in your own backyard. That's why I know that everyone has at least one adventure worth telling. Now, I knew Steve Malden's father many years before Steve was born, so his story has a special interest for me. And here's Steve Malden to tell you about it himself. Steve? I've always been an ambitious guy. I wanted to make a lot of money. My dad did. Only he wasn't careful with it or else he trusted the wrong people. Anyway, dad died when I was five and mom and I moved to the Lower East Side, to the ghetto of the city. The money that she'd gotten for her furs and jewelry saw me through high school. Working and going to school after that was a full-time schedule. I wanted to be a lawyer. I got to be one, too. Although it didn't leave me much money for any social life. My buddy Eddie and I had always hung around together pretty much, just the two of us, talking, taking long walks. I liked it best when we walked uptown. It was clean and rich. The day I was taken on my first job at Steele and Wendell Law Associates, Mom had Eddie up for a celebration dinner. Wouldn't have been a celebration without him. Uh, that's what I call real cheesecake. Have another piece, Eddie. Oh, no room. I've had seconds already. Seconds? Don't let him kid you, Mom. He sneaked a slice while you were out getting the coffee. She knows it, don't you, Mom? I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> See, Kibitzer, I got the lady of the house on my side. Yeah, some house. What are you talking about? Looks swell since you painted. Oh, sure. Too bad I couldn't paint in the bathroom and a couple of radiators. Radiators, he says, with sweat rolling down his neck. <laughs> oh, you can laugh now, but come winter, Who's you Who's laughing? Know. Hey, you think that dump of vows is Buckingham Palace and that tool shop I work in? Oh, brother, suffocate in the summer, icicles in the winter. Ah, uh, stop your beefing. Come on. Let's get the dishes done. All right. Oh, no, this is a special occasion. Oh, I'm... no, nothing doing, Mom. You go on downstairs. Yeah, huh? Mom, cool it down on the front stoop. Tonight's my treat. Now, go on, both of you. <laughs> okay, Mom, thanks. Hurry it up, Mom. Yeah, it won't be long. Oh, she's swell. Yeah, that's what burns me. Washing dishes. Listen, yeah, lots of women. I know, I know, but she used to have so much. Your mom's not the griping kind. Cold water flat, one dress in five years. That dress my mother had was longer ago than that. Uh, well, things are going to be different soon. Two dresses, huh? Two closets full. Two for me, too. <laughs> you wouldn't know what to do. Oh, with. I'll know, all right. T shirts are cool. Where I live, it'll be air conditioned. Every room. <laughs> Don't forget now. Got to have a whole bathroom of my own when I visit you. Yeah, we'll fix you up. <laughs> Wine and gray. Yep, and a real light wood desk. A shiny kind, you know. We're at your office now, I take it? Yep. Mm. Yeah, yeah, New fine. job must be a honey. <laughs> they give you your mop or do you have to buy your own? <laughs> okay, wise guy. Hey, Steve, I, I haven't said it, but I... I'm, I'm as pleased about it as a guy... Thanks, Eddie, I know. It wasn't just a break, neither, you know. You worked for Oh, it. and Eddie, it's a darn good firm. John Steele himself interviewed me, said I could carry on private practice if I have the time. Sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, you ought to see this place, Eddie. Looks so yeah. big and so... That's what you had in mind, huh, Bob? Yeah. Oh, hi, Mom. Oh. Took down some nice, refreshing hot air. <laughs> Any requests? Yeah, how about one for silence? Ah, you don't appreciate good music. Hmm. Hi, Abe. Hello, Abe. Old Abe sure could use a new push cart. He waved you too, Stephen. All right, all right. Well, I'm too tired to wave at everybody goes by. And... Ah, he was a nice old gent. <laughs> oh, he thought it would be... He was looking the other way when we were sneaking hunks of ice from his cart, remember? Now, those push carts are a menace. Abe's out working more than usual lately. Then he could use a clean shirt, too. His wife has cancer. Takes a 
and let it go. We have two fans, Stephen, perhaps. Sure, Mom. The place is so poorly ventilated. Yeah, yeah, I'll take it up to her tomorrow. Well, better get home and help Penny. Big deal. <laughs> yeah. Probably clean up all of 50 cents. If that. Ah, what the heck? I get a kick out of seeing That's, That's what, what counts, you... isn't it, Eddie? Sure, Ma. It helps. Uh, besides, they appreciate my harmonica playing, see? Mm. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Mom. It's 12 party. We always like having you, dear. See you tomorrow, Steve. You didn't say good night. Hmm? Oh, oh uh, good night, boy. Night. You look like your father when you frown, Stephen. Well, that's good. I want to be exactly like Dad. Yes. You don't sound so Success happy. Success in business isn't everything, son. It's a lot. It makes a difference. Get up and right face you one. Get up and bum lay around all day. Yes, get up. Brother, nice neighbors we've got. Being tired does that to people. Yeah, well, it's not going to happen to us. It hasn't. It could. But we're not going to let it, Mom. Not now. Put your finger on this spring here, will you? Well, sure, it's crying. What gives? We're moving. Well, why don't you let a guy know? Gee, I've hardly seen you in two months. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Eddie. You've not been up so busy lately. Yeah. So much to learn. Yeah, yeah. You better ease up on that accelerator, boy, huh? Oh, I know what I'm doing, Eddie. Well, what are you doing? I'm getting up there, Eddie. Dough, security. I'm going to get all I can. There's a lot to you, don't it? Well, doesn't it to everyone? Hmm? Don't know anybody turns it down. Even so, Andy, look, Andy, look, you're not like me. You suppose I'd be satisfied dealing out penny candy and ice cream cones? You think I like buying ready-made suits down on 14th Street? It's not for me, Buster. I want people looking at me and saying, hey, there he goes, Steve Malden, the lawyer. Big time, that's going to be me. And I'm going to earn it, too. Well? Well, what? Well, why don't you say something? Is there anything to say? No, no, I guess that's about it. After we moved uptown, I lost all control of time. I stayed on at Steele and Wendell's about a year, just long enough to make the contacts I needed for my own office, and then I moved on. I felt a little guilty, taking so much of Steele's following with me, but I told myself they came to me. At first, I handled mostly divorces and lightweight stuff, but then I found myself hitting the more interesting cases. So I had Mom keep a clipping book for me, and was filling up nice and fat since I'd been made district attorney. And the last was the announcement of my entry into the race for mayor. I hadn't seen much of Eddie in the past few years. Matter of time, I kept telling myself, but I knew that wasn't it. So did Mom. Eddie must have known, too, because he didn't call anymore. And then one morning, a bombshell exploded right in my face. The next case on my desk was the state versus Edward Sanger. The charge? Manslaughter. Yeah? Stephen, the papers... I know, Mom. Have you been to see him yet? No, I, I just heard about it. Of course you'll be able to clear him. Well, I don't. Stephen, you are taking... Stephen? Yeah, Mom, I'm taking it. Oh, for a minute, I... Against thought... Eddie, Mom. I don't understand, son. We're prosecutors in this office. Couldn't you find a way to keep it out? No, there's nothing Eddie's I can do. your friend. Yeah, but did it mean... I know. The election next month. Well, I... Does he have a good lawyer? Yes, one of the best, John Steele. But our evidence is pretty heavy against I read him. it. Stephen, won't you reconsider? I'd like to, Mom, the but I... certainly can't hold this sort of thing it's against It's not just the voters, Mom. I see. I won't be home for dinner. There's cold chicken in the icebox. Oh, can I ask her again? I'm spending the evening with Eddie's mother. Oh, yeah. Stephen, please. I'm sorry, Mom. All right, son. Goodbye. Let me see. Edward Sanger. You're going to have to call the accused. Now, come in. 
Your secretary said it'd be okay. Oh, Mr. Steele, sure. Sit down, won't you? I can't stay that long. Just wanted to ask you a favor. Well, what can I do for you? I'd like you to take another look at Eddie Sanger's case. Why? The boy didn't do it. Oh, well, you're supposed to say that. You're his lawyer. You're supposed to think it. You're his friend. Well, the evidence is too strong. I couldn't... Sure, I know. There's no positive evidence, though, that he did not do it. Well, then well, I don't... That's the point. I'm sure we could prove somehow that he didn't do it. You have a lead? No, but if you keep it out of court, at least give me a little time. I'm sure with a little time... The I'll case look... is already scheduled. I know, but... It'll look prejudiced to the public if yeah, I... The voting said... public. Well, look, if it got out that Eddie is a friend of mine... Don't worry. Eddie doesn't consider you a friend anymore. No, you don't know what you're trying Should to do. Should he? Well, why not? Steve, I knew your father when he first started, and later, too. So? I was just a young inkwell filler in his office when he was making top racket money. Now, Dad played his cards right. Your dad respected two ideals above everything else before he died. Personal integrity and friendship. Oh, well, he must have been a great guy. I said he respected them before he died. I didn't say he stuck by them while he lived. Now, look, you can't come in here and start... Easy to... now, son. You should know. I don't want to hear. Your father didn't seem to have many friends when he failed, did he? How do I know? I was a kid. It was because he let himself down all the way, and his worthwhile friends had lost interest. Get out of here, Son, it's for your own. Get out of here now. Get out. All right. And you can tell your client for me that I'll see the justice is done. Tell him that for me. I'm interested in only one thing, Eddie, that the court hears your true story. Remember, you're here under oath. Yes, sir. Eddie, suppose you tell us what happened on the night of December 20th. Well, I, I... I was working overtime. Will you tell the court what your work is? I'm a toolmaker. You make screwdrivers, hammers, and wrenches. Is that right? Yes, sir. Go on, son. Well, like I told you yesterday, Mr. Steele, I was at the shop later than usual that night. How late? After dark? Oh, sure. About 10, I guess. Anyway, I was interested in this here new kind of wrench we're making. I wanted to take it home to study for weight and stuff, so I stuck it in my locker while I took my shower. And when I came Just out, I was... one moment, Eddie. Was there anyone else in the locker room with you? Nobody but me was in the shop that I know Objection, of. Objection, Your Honor. That is speculation on the defendant's part. Objection sustained. Go on, Mr. Sanger. You know, on second thought, Judge, I could be wrong, because... What makes you a... say that, Eddie? Well, it's a big building, and I was in the shower. I see. Well, go on, please. Yeah. Well, anyway, I've been having things in my mind lately. What with my mother being sick? I object, Your Honor. That statement is irrelevant. Defendant is trying to gain sympathy by this, this obvious method. But it's true. Objection I Objection overruled. Continue, please. Like I say, I wasn't thinking too much of what I was doing, I guess, because I forgot all about that wrench and started home without it. Didn't think of it till I was sitting in a beanery at the corner, having a cup of coffee and shooting the breeze with the guys. So I went back... Uh, one moment, Eddie. Did you mention to the man in the, uh, the restaurant that you were returning to the shop? Sure, they give me the horse laugh for my good memory. All right, go on. Well, I went around the back way this time. I get to my locker and the wrench ain't setting sideways on the shelf like I left it. The wrench was gone? No, it was there all right, but it moved. This time it was facing the front of the locker. Um, Eddie, uh, what did you do then? Stuck it in my pocket and started out. I only got to the front entrance when I almost fell over the big guy lying in the doorway. Thought he was drunk. Anyways, as I was bending over to look at him closer, I thought it might be somebody I knew. <laughs> Wrench slid out of my pocket. I was just picking it up when a cop come around the corner. The tall guy on the sidewalk, and then he saw something I hadn't noticed. There was blood on the edge of the wrench. It must have got that way falling near the guy, because top of his head was all mad. Objection. Things. Your Honor, this is pure supposition on the part of the defendant. Objection sustained. That's fine, Eddie. I think that'll be all for now. Just one moment, Mr. Sanger. I would like to clear up one small point. I gather that you work at night very often. Is that true? Yeah. Are there many other men who work overtime? Oh, none of the guys do. They're all commuters from Hoboken. <laughs> then it is reasonable to assume that no one else was there the night of the attack. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. All right, let's put it this way, Eddie. Did you actually see anyone or know of anyone who was in the building or near enough to kill the man inside the doorway? I didn't see nobody, but... You're then... under oath, Mr. Sanger. Gosh, I... I think... Of course, there are rats making noise. But did you actually hear anything? Well, I... 
Of course, there are rats making noise. But did you actually hear anything? Well, I... Maybe Are I... you sure? Well, it's just... Are you? Oh, I guess not. Nice going, Mr. Mayor. I think so. They gave Eddie 15 years. He looked so small and white leaving the courtroom, I wanted to go over and say something to him, but Gerber, my campaign manager, was there, and it wouldn't have looked right. There was that same puzzled expression on Eddie's face I'd seen when we were kids. The time the rich boy kicked him for dragging his white pup out of traffic because Eddie's hands were dirty. Well, the election looked good. The papers on our team played up the quick conviction, as Gerber had said they would, all except Jimmy Cranin on the Star Herald, who was always beating a drum for some cause or other. I could have dragged the trial out longer if I'd looked into a little thing that occurred to me, but, like I say, fast trials are cheaper, and it made the boys at campaign headquarters happy, so I didn't bother. Mom didn't talk about it, but I knew she was seeing Eddie every visitor's day. I could tell. Well, it's a fine thing. I take my mother to the best restaurant in town, and she doesn't even eat. I'm just not hungry. Oh, sure you are, Mom. Now, let me order you no, something else. No, this is fine. Well, why don't you say it? You really want me to? No. He's so little. He always was. Oh, I don't know, five, six. That's not what I meant. Yeah. He looks so hurt, so bewildered. Mom, look, I'd rather All not... All those people accuse you. Eat your dinner. Can't believe Mom, will you please? Oh, Eddie, he couldn't. I was only doing my duty. I know he did Mom, will you stop? I can't believe it. No, stop it, not please. Not in him, it just is... Stop it, stop it! Yes. Oh, oh what... shut up! Why? You were right on the ball there, Stevie. <laughs> that last run through was a godsend. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Sanger. Will you knock off? Yeah, what could be sweeter? Time like this. The food will hold out. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> what, headlines? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That's what I call cooperation. Every paper we counted on came through. How about the Star Herald? Ah, that training's a crank. You always got a cause. Yeah, yeah, but Steve, don't... I've got to remind you again, the boys at campaign headquarters don't like training. A lot of people read the Star Herald. Steve. Like I said. Okay, Gerber, okay. <laughs> well, stop looking so worried, Stevie boy. It's in the bag. Why, vote to loan. I don't want to hear about it. We're not worried. I even ordered me a new car. Man who'll be in my position. We're not in yet. Voting's just a technicality, my boy. We know where we stand. Well, then why the big rally tomorrow night? Pep meeting, boy. Good publicity. After you read that speech of yours. Of mine. Well, saves us time, uh, writing your speeches. Hello, Steve. Well, well, Mr. Cranin, glad to see you. Glad to yes, see you. Yes, I'm fast. How's your mother, Steve? I've been She's not here. Hasn't got a strong stomach, eh? Uh, the food over there is good. Why not try Thanks, it? Thanks, I will. Oh, uh, how about a lead on your speech tomorrow night? Well, I haven't decided oh, yet. Oh, come on I... now, Steve. You must be promising. Why, folks, sure. Don't... Steve's pointing up how he'll save the city money. Keynote economy, you know. Like, say, uh, fast trial? Like, say, fair ones. Hit it right on the button, Mr. Cranin. Yes, sir. Steve's got the interest of the city at heart, all right. Interest? With or without? I don't get you. Principal. <laughs> That's a good one, Cranin. Sharp, boy, sharp. You're not laughing, Steve. Afraid your sense of humor, too? Ah, uh, you... Steve's pretty tired, Cranin. After oh, all... Oh, sure, I understand. Now, me, I'd rather sleep night. Meaning I don't. Meaning you used to be able to. Didn't you? Come to think of it, Cranin, you don't look so hot. Now, I'd recommend lots of fresh air outside. Come to think of it, Steve, you're right. I could use some clean air. <laughs> Stevie boy, this time tomorrow night, you'll be his honor, Mayor Stephen Walton. Uh, 
Yep, the boys have got great plans, man. I'll bet. Uh, <clears throat> headquarters, get your speech? I've got it. Fine. This place is jammed. I hope I do all right. Oh, nothing to worry about, Steve. Got our boys space every tenth feet. How about the other oh, Steve? what's it to worry about? You're going to tell them what they want to hear? Yeah. What do you care anyway? Public's used to promises. Hey, that, what's, hey, what's the matter there? What's going on down there in that, in that first row? First row, that's where it. An old man, why are they shoving him? Rotten ushers, I told him those first rows are for party members. Well, that... That looks like... Always something. I'll, I'll take care of it. Hey, but it's old Abe. Go on, get him back. Hey. I don't care when he got here. Those are reserved seats. Move him. No. Then throw him out. Not you shouldn't you. have pushed him around like that. Ah, uh, probably a crackpot. Well, you shouldn't have hey, pushed him. Hey, there's a signal. I better get started. For years now, you've been waiting for the kind of man you wanted for your city mayor. Today, he is here and ready. We've all watched his rapid growth from an obscure lawyer to district attorney, and we know there can be one and only one man to be our mayor. His only thoughts are for the good of the people. You, as I'm sure he will reassure you presently. So now, with the utmost pride, I give you that intrepid champion of the people, defender of your civic rights, the man of the people, the man of the hour, Honest Steve Morgan. Friends, 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 party members, this is indeed a day that I shall remember the rest of my life. Now, I've heard a lot of speeches made by people who were running for office. So I know just what you want to know. You ask, what about you when I am mayor of our great city? All right. All right. You may be sure that you will be first on the list. Your own welfare individually is the way my term will be governed. I was born in this city... I know all parts of it. I... I... Yes, it's... It's the individual that counts. The individual... It's... The individual... Steve, what's the matter? No. No, I can't. Steve, what are you doing? Steve, what's got into you? You lost your mind? Get back, I said. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Please, ladies and gentlemen. I can only hope for your forgiveness. Those of you who have faith in me. But I find I cannot go through with making promises I know I won't be able to keep. I would like to have been your mayor. Few men would turn down such an opportunity. But it means... It means I wouldn't be able to guide you fairly because of commitments to those who put me in office. I don't know when it happened. But somewhere along the line, I seem to have... to have misplaced my integrity. And that's something a man needs if he's going to live decently with others. Mostly with himself. Somebody stop him. And so, I withdraw my candidacy. Okay, bright boy. You just sang your own funeral march in politics. It's all right with me, Gerber. It's about time. I stood in the thin rain outside the back of the auditorium until all the angry voices were gone and the big building was dark. The rain felt clean. 
The news truck dropping off a bundle of the early papers made me realize that I'd been standing there for hours. The top paper had come loose. I looked for my name. It was there, but not in headlines now. The bold banner type carried the name of the party's new <laughs> dark horse. I found my name buried in the story toward the bottom of the page, already in small print. I knew what I had to do. I hopped a cab to the station and caught the first train out to state prison. Hi, Eddie. Eddie, I, um... It's okay, fella. Have a seat. Thanks. Fixed yourself up good last night, didn't you? You seen the papers, huh? A guard let me see his a minute. Played up the new man a lot more. Oh, yeah, 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 they don't waste time. People forget quick. Yeah, like, for instance... Oh, forget it, will you? Okay, boy, let's get with this now. The man on the sidewalk, how tall would you say he was? You mean a stiff? Yeah, how tall, how tall? Your height, my height? Oh, what's this got to do with... Answer me, Eddie, please. Oh, I don't know. Lots taller than me. Six, six two, I'd say. Maybe more. Why? Six, two. Huh? That's what I thought. Well, what's that could... Don't you see? The blow that killed him was on the top of the man's head. You couldn't have done it. I couldn't have reached. See? Yeah. Okay, Sonny. Hey, guard, let me out of here. Steve. I'll be in touch, Eddie. Probably after lunch. Hold it, will you, buddy? Yeah? See you. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. Title Detour, the story of a man who almost traded his personal integrity for an empty success. And if you like Steve's story, friends, why not come back next week? I'll have a man who was trapped in the red sands of hate. I like to call it Box Canyon. So until next week, this is John Steele saying, A life of adventure is yours for the taking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It'll find you. Well... So long and good hunting. Remember next week, Mutual presents Box Canyon, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele, adventurer. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.